There we go. Hello. Welcome to Verbling. I am Teacher Oakley. And once again, it's time for idioms class. Idioms, idioms, idioms. Today, and actually tomorrow as well, we're going to be uh, looking at idioms which uh, English speakers use to talk about problems. And since there are a lot of problems in the world, it's going to take two days. <laughs> okay. Um, as usual, we'll be doing some exercises together. And as we do the exercises, I will do my best to clarify uh, sometimes the situational use of the idioms. Some idioms are used really almost always exclusively in business or maybe only to talk of the, to the family or only used in the third person or something like that. I'll try to clarify any of that kind of thing as well as, uh, and you students can help me with this, brainstorming uh, any other uh, associated idioms that might be used um, in a similar way or in a similar situation. And uh, please, if you have any questions about idioms, does it, you know, as in teacher, does it mean the same as blah, blah, blah? Um, of course, I will answer those questions as well and and please feel free to share any idioms translated from your own native tongue or or express the idea if you actually have exactly the same idiom in your language I, I personally am always interested in hearing about that stuff so uh, let me do a microphone check say howdy to everyone and we'll get started uh, hello Ileana how are you Hey, hello. I'm okay. Nice to see you again. Likewise. I've been on vacation for a while, but I'm back now. Uh, okay. Um, oops. I've had a weird technical thing. Hang on. What's going on? Uh, okay. Uh, hello, Nian. Hi, teachers. Nice to see you again. Likewise. Welcome back. Yeah. Uh, all right. Um, Rebecca, welcome back as well. Hi again. Hello again. Hello again. <laughs> and Christian has also joined us. Hey, Christian. Good morning. Okay, how are you today? Good morning. I'm doing well. Thank you. Uh, it's afternoon here. My favorite time of the year here in the Philippines, the weather's actually mild and cool and there's breezy. It's nice. Uh, in any case, all right, let's get started with the <laughs> somewhat negative and uncomfortable topic of problems. <laughs> we're going to start out today. I'm going to do a screen share. Uh, we're going to look at... We're going to warm up with doing an exercise, fill in the blank exercise with some literal meanings of words which will um, which will be keywords in the idioms which will follow. So it's a good idea to make sure we understand the meanings of these words here in bold italics above. Uh, I'd like you guys to just read the sentence and fill in the blank as best you can. Ileana, number one, if you would. Yeah. Um, if you are, oops. Uh, if you are in, uh -huh, you are in, you are in an awkward or difficult situation. Hmm. Awkward. <laughs> awkward. Yeah. Some strange yeah. word. Awkward is an awkward word. <laughs> okay. It looks weird. I I have no idea where the derivation. I have no idea where this word comes from because it's very unusual. It's not normal. It doesn't look like Indians? a normal, nor, normal spelled word. Indians. I have no idea. I, re I really don't know. <laughs> um, okay. Awkward really has kind of two meanings. Physical meaning, like um, let's see. Uh, well, uh, penguins are kind of awkward on land. You know, they have that weird waddle shuffle walk. But when mm -hmm. they're in the water, they're very graceful. 
and beautiful. Uh, okay, they're physically awkward. Awkward situation, on the other hand, uh, okay, if you say to somebody, oh, uh, when is your baby due, ma'am? And she tells you, I'm not pregnant, that would be awkward. <laughs> uncomfortable, <laughs> uncomfortable social situations. Uh, you don't know quite what to say or do as awkward. Uh, okay, so there you go. All right, so what do you think? If you're in a blank, um, you're in an awkward or more in difficult. Hmm. Jam? Very good. You are correct. Uh, okay, jam is one of these. It's just a good luck. I just guessed it. <laughs> well, really. I bet you have some kind of uh, background. Perhaps you've heard of a traffic jam. For example, yeah, maybe. Which is obviously the type of awkward or difficult situation. For example, so jam here means that it's tra like traffic jam. Well, it's very similar. Sure. Similar yeah. idea. Uh, a door I mean, jam. idea of this sentence is it? Does it yeah. mean that if you are in jam, in traffic jam? Oh no! In this sentence, if you're in a jam, it means any difficult situation. Oh, mm -hmm. I. I lost my wallet. I don't have enough money to take the train home. Can you lend me? Can you lend me five dollars? I'm I'm in a jam. I really need to get home. Okay. okay. My car broke down, and I have to pick up my sister at the airport. I'm in a jam. Can you help me out? I'm, I'm in okay. a difficult situation. Um, yeah. Uh, so a traffic jam has to do with problem, you know, it has to do with stuck. A door jam is a physical object like a, a triangle, and you smash it into the door and the bottom of the door, it makes the door stuck, okay? Mm -hmm. Well, the door jam is the bottom of a door, but you jam something, you make it stuck, so the idea of being stuck. Mm -hmm. And we often use that, I'm stuck in a terrible situation, you know, as opposed to I'm or I'm stuck in a jam. Can you help me out? Actually, the idea of mm -hmm. stuckness. And if you want to think of stuck, you can think of sticky. Uh, do you know the food? A sticky food? Yeah, sure. <laughs> Called jam, okay. Fruit jam, raspberry jam, whatever. Strawberry jam, yum yum. Uh, okay, so there's several meanings to jam. And uh, noun and verb. If you jam the door shut, you make it stuck. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, okay. Let's move on. Let me quickly welcome V to the class. Hi, V. Welcome back. Hi, Oakley. Yeah. Hi, hi. Hi. Uh, uh, hi. And and okay. Uh, Nian, number two, please. Oh, I really don't know. I can get. Can I get? Oh yeah, please do. Yeah. Uh, if you are in the lim in limbo, you are neither in heaven, heaven or in hell. Heaven. Uh, yeah, heaven. Neither nor. Either or. Neither nor. Neither nor. Neither. Of course. Or negative. Neither nor. And you are correct. Good guess. Uh, limbo is the well. Um, Okay. But I don't know. I don't understand uh, it. Oh boy. Uh, okay. I'll do my best to make this brief. But <laughs> Judeo-Christian religion, uh, particularly Catholic religion, has the idea that if you're bad, you go to hell. If you're good, you go to heaven. But if you're somewhere in between, if you're balanced between good and evil, you go to a place called limbo. Um. There's another word for it, which I can't think of. Can anybody else think of what that's called? What's the other more formal word for it? Uh, my brain isn't coming up with it. But anyway, this is the place you go where whoever, whomever, I don't know, God or the angels or St. Peter, can't figure out if you belong in heaven or in hell. So... For example, newborn babies would go to limbo because they haven't had a chance to actually be sinful or anything yet. It's uh, so it's 
it's very similar to heaven and hell. It's kind of a, I don't know, imaginary place. Well, I don't know how imaginary these things are for you, but whatever. Um, yeah, now that's going to bug me because I'm going to keep trying to think of the other word for this. All right. I'll, if I come up with it, I'll tell you. Uh, all right, Rebecca, number three. Number three, you tighten nut and bolt with a wow, nut and bolt with a I don't know with a blank. <laughs> yes, it's a tool. So often they're either sized or they're possibly adjustable. Uh, okay, nut. Are kind of uh, you know uh, like uh, uh, almost and something like that. Well, nuts. It's nuts. It's nuts. Uh, there's a nuts. usually six-sided. No, a bolt is like a screw, but it has like a six-sided top, and a nut is the thing that fits on the other end of a bolt. So you okay. bolt two things together to join them together. Ah, with that uh, is not uh, Spanish. No, I don't know what is that. Spanish. Banner. Yes. In, well, uh... Okay. Ah, it's a key. It's a what? A key. A key? Well, that's a new one for me. Does anybody know what a span... Spanner is very British. Uh, Americans have a totally different word. Any Anybody know the American word? Anybody in class? It's a tool. Well, it's a type of tool. It's one type of tool. Yeah, it's a very specific type of tool. Uh, Americans would refer to it as a wrench. Yeah, a wrench or uh, there's different sized wrenches. There's an adjustable wrench. A monkey wrench is a big one that you use for pipes. Uh, yeah, so... Pretty exclusively, this one, British people call it a spanner. Americans definitely call it a wrench, and we don't, we don't really yeah, interchange. We call it British key. British key? Really? English. English key. That is the reason I said key ah. is a key. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That's, but all right. it's a kind of tool. Yeah, I know it's a tool. All right. But English key. That's it for English. English. I heard. I heard it's like screw. Screw. <laughs> Screw is different. Uh, okay, uh, a screw is different. Let me try to explain. A screw has a sharp point on it, so you're kind of drilling it into the wall, for example, or a board. A bolt, you need to already have a hole for a bolt because the end of the bolt is completely flat. You can't just stick a bolt into a wall unless you're, I don't know, Superman or something because it has no point to kind of drill it in. It, you need a hole already existing to join two things together. You see. Screw, you use a screwdriver for a screw. Um, maybe an electric screwdriver, but whatever. Uh, bolts and wrench. Bolts. For bolts, you need, you need a spanner or a wrench. And you use bolts to join two things together. Usually, things like you probably have a bolt on your computer desk, or your um, on like metal office furniture, or your bed. You you bolt the metal parts together. Okay, moving on. Uh, quick shout out, hello, welcome, Ken. Hi, Ken. Yes, hello. How are you? Good. Thank you very much. Uh, come around to you in uh, just a little bit. Hang on. Next, Christian, number four, please. Yeah, if you jump up and down only on one leg, you hop, no? <laughs> sure. I guess uh, this so. one, It was very easy, this one. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, kind of. Actually, I find this one slightly confusing. If you, you know, for uh, Americans, a, a hop can be on one, you hop on one foot, but you can hop with two feet. It just means a really small jump. Sometimes yeah. we even say a bunny hop. One, but take one bunny hop forward. All right, just a little hop. Uh, yeah, 
Yeah, that's it. It's obviously a verb, and you got it. Yeah, rabbits hop. There you go. V, number five. Um, trains run down rails, and if they crash, they come off the rails. Yes, they do. Uh, okay, yes, yeah, so the parallel metal beams are the rails which trains rest on. Okay. Um, very good. Uh, Ken, number six. Okay. A small sea inlet is a what? What is inlet? Yeah, okay. This one is weird for me because Americans conceive of this quite differently. But uh, first of all, an inlet is uh, uh, like a, you know what a peninsula is for yeah. land? Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. If it's water, then it's an inlet. So it's a small, narrow part that goes into the land. I see. As opposed to a peninsula, which is land that juts out, sticks out mm. into the water. Mm. Yeah. A uh, small sea inlet is a limbo. Mm, no. Mm. Uh, creek? Creek, yeah. yeah. That's right. Um, but I have to tell you, as an American, that's not that's not what we think of as a creek. A creek is a small river. Uh, mm -hmm. you, you could have very small rivers like a rivulet. Uh, then you have a stream or a brook. And then a little bigger is a stream. And then a little bigger is a creek. And then a little bigger is a river. And no, I don't have any exact sizes or dimensions, but as an American, that's, you know, you could hop over, you could jump over, um, a, a, you could jump over a stream, probably. Uh, a brook. Oh, I forgot a brook. You might be able to jump across the stones on a brook. Uh, a creek, you're going to have to figure out some way to get across. You're probably going to get wet, and the river is a river. It's, much bigger. So, yeah, I guess for British, a creek is the part of the river that goes into the ocean, but, yeah, yeah as an American, we would call that the mouth of the river or the mouth of the creek or the mouth of the whatever is the part where it goes into the sea. That one's a little confusing for me as well. Uh, all right. Ileana, number seven. Um, to close and then open your eyes very quickly is the most common meaning of blink. Right. Uh, what's it called when you close one eye? Hmm. I so don't far. know. <laughs> you don't know. Okay. Uh, one eye is a wink with a W. Wink. wink. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, you might. Uh, you might. I might wink at a pretty girl if I'm trying to flirt okay. with her. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I might yeah, I wink. Yeah, I might wink at a small child if I'm just joking around with her. Mhm. Mm uh, like that. Yeah. Uh, okay. Blink. Uh, also, an older meaning of blink is a sudden flash of light. So, for example, a blinking light. Sometimes traffic lights go on, off, on, off, on, off. It's a blinking light. Or your your emergency flashers on your car, the red lights that go on, off, on, off. It's a blinking light. Uh, getting idiomatic, on the blink, it means not working or out of, the, out of order, but it it's, has a definite connotation of meaning temporarily. So if I say my internet is on the blink, I'm, I'm sort of inferring that I think it will be working later. Or my television's on the blink, and I'm going to fix it. I'm bringing it to the shop, and I'll have it fixed. Uh, something like that. Okay, let's get to uh, the idioms. Um, all right, we're going to read these phrases uh, with an idiom, which is going to be in bold print. Um, these uh, 
basically explain or define one or the other uh, the idioms that are contained in the sentence. Your job is to tell me if the sentence is true or false, and then we'll discuss it a little bit. So, Nian, uh, number one, go ahead and read the sentence, and we'll talk about it. If a problem is only the tip of the iceberg, it means there are much bigger or more serious problems to emerge. Okay. Like, yes. Uh, I, I know these items, uh, and I guess it's true. It, yes, this one is true. Uh, this idiom, the I sound. Again, uh, Nian, be careful with problems. Make sure you're pronouncing the S to emerge. There's emerge. a J ja sound. Emerge. Emerge. Yeah. Um, sometimes words in the middle of a sentence, we blend the two words together or join them together, it's very common, but the last word in a sentence is very important to pronounce the the end of the word uh, clearly. And when it ends with like a D or a G or a K, you might have to actually add a little bit of a vowel sound that's not really there. Emerge. Emerge. I, my final word, word duh, uh. See, I'm, I'm vo vocalizing, I'm voicing an extra sound that's not really there. I do that to make it clear what that final sound is. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Sure, you're welcome. Um, yes, it is true. The tip of the iceberg, uh, as they say, I don't know, I, or I read somewhere, I'm not sure, that only 10% of the iceberg is floating above the water, that below the water line, 90% of the bulk of the mass of the iceberg is below the water line. That's, I, I don't know where I come by that information, but anyway, that's the idea here. So the tip of the iceberg means there's much more to it than that. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Just one question. Uh, sure. Is it right to say the top of the iceberg or it's not right? That sounds weird. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's one of those things, you know, like it's raining cats and dogs. If you say it's raining dogs and cats, people don't understand you. It's like, what? That doesn't seem right. Yeah, that's a, I, I've heard that people, language learners, students say that before, the top of the iceberg. It sounds very strange, actually, to a native speaker. Um, yeah. Again, for problems. This You wouldn't say, oh... We got married and we got many wonderful gifts and we we received $5,000 in cash, but that's only the tip of the iceberg, meaning other wonderful gifts. No, you would never use it that way. It's definitely negative. Okay, uh, next one, Rebecca, number two. Number two, someone who is in a tight corner is too far to get through a door. <laughs> is it true or false? I guess it's true. <laughs> well, I, I don't know. I, I don't necessarily think so. Um, no. Uh, no? Said, okay, said in a tight corner. Yeah, what does that mean? And, I have no idea. Okay, if you're in a tight corner, it's very similar to you're in a jam. You're, you're. It's difficult to get out of the situation. Ah. There, uh, so, kind of, it's but obviously related. more abstract. It's nothing mm -hmm. related to be fat or or thin. No. Okay. Okay. No, not at all. Not even remotely. Um, there is very much a related in idiom. Uh, which is similar. Rebecca, what do you think it means if you paint yourself into a corner? Very much related. Well, I think it's something dangerous in a corner. It could be something like that. Have you ever painted your house? Uh, yes, but uh, a professional uh, painted <laughs> by, uh, for me. Okay, no. well, if, if you're ever painting yourself, and for example, you're going to paint the floor, you would not start at the door and go to the far corner. 
because you'd end up in the corner and you realize the whole floor is wet and there's no way for you to get across the room to the door. <laughs> You're in trouble. How are you going to get out of that situation? You paint yourself into a corner. So very similar to the idea he is in a tight corner. I would use that to maybe he's got a he's in a he's stuck in a very bad situation, maybe not his fault. He painted himself into a corner. It's he did it to himself. He made choices or decisions or he did things that got himself into a very difficult situation. Mm -hmm. He has no way to get out of this situation. Yeah, that's that's the idea. Okay. Yeah. Uh, cool. Thank you. Right. You're welcome. Uh, Christian, number three. Number three. If you go off the rail, you lose self-respect and perhaps start drinking or talking drugs. Uh, go off the rail is... Um, is to have a way is not acceptable. Yeah. Um, and I think if you go off the rail, you lose. I think it's correct. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Because it's, it's something is not acceptable. It's not correct. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, yeah. Basically correct according to society. That's it. Um, or maybe not the society. Maybe what people have assumed is right for you uh, okay um, yeah uh, you're doing something completely different and probably self-destructive yes for example if you have a manager you go off the rail with you, your employees maybe you know because you make something is not acceptable is correct or uh, well I, uh, clarify uh, can you say it again yeah, uh, for me, go off the rail is, uh, you, for example, you have a one manager, don't respect the employees, ah. you know, and uh, he go off the rail, you know, he's not, uh, he says something or he make, he do something is not acceptable. Yeah, well, the idea of going off the rails is that, you know, consider that you were on the rails, you were on the right path, like a train, staying on the rails, but then this manager suddenly does something different, out of the ordinary, not customary, not acceptable behavior, whatever. That's the idea is that you you were doing things correctly or the right way or the socially acceptable way, but suddenly you're not. That's the idea. You change your behavior. That's yeah, more, yeah. more the idea of the idiom. Your behavior has changed. Not the good way that you were before, but again, uh, negative. Definitely negative. Uh, okay. Okay, V, number four. If you put the cat amongst the, among the peaches, everyone will get upset. And I don't know, but I guess it's fine. Yeah, I guess so. So what does this mean, put the cat among the pigeons? I think uh, maybe you are threatening other people or mm. well uh, American version this is the British version I prefer the American version of this idiom which is this you put the fox in charge of the hen house I think this is clearer uh, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah what is it what does the fox want to do? He wants to rob and eat the chickens. Mm -hmm. So if you put the fox in charge of the hen house, obviously it's going to be a disaster. Mm -hmm. um, okay. For example, I'll give you an example. When George Bush Jr. put the CEO of Goldman Sachs in charge of the U.S. Treasury, all right, in my opinion, he was putting the fox in charge of the hen house. So the man making the rules, he's making the rules for his own business. So of course he can make rules that are don't work or he can he can change things to suit himself and get away with whatever he wants to get away with. That's yeah. the idea. Yeah. yeah. We also have that idea in my country. Are you really? Yeah. 
same animals or different no. animals? Um, what is giving the X for um, uh, eagle or eagle? Yeah, the X for eagle. I don't know which animal, but that is like the bird. Okay. Very dangerous bird. And All right. In charge of the leaving the eagle in charge of the eggs like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. There you go. All right. Uh, that's the idea. It, yeah. Exactly the wrong person. You want to have authority over over the situation. All right. Uh, Ken, number five. If your TV is on the blink, it has has stopped working. It's true. Yeah, yeah. we just discussed this a little earlier. And again, the idea is if it's on the blink, on, off, on, off, on, off, the idea is that you, whoever's using this idiom feels that it will be working again in the, in the future. Uh, very good. Ileana, number six. Uh, if two or more people, uh, if two or more people are in the same boat, it means they are very similar. Yeah, that's right. Not quite. Uh, not quite. Yeah, I agree. Uh, it means that they are in the same situation. There you go. Yeah. Situation is the key word. That's it exactly. Um, uh, Yes, and again, you know, today's lesson is about problems, so we don't say, oh, we both won the lottery. We're in the same boat. Not really. <clears throat> Unless we're saying, oh, we both won the lottery. Now we both owe a million dollars in tax, a negative yeah. thing. We're in the yeah. same boat. Uh -huh. yeah. Right. That's it. Very good. Uh, Nian, number seven. Oh, a friend who is in a rain state, state looks wonderful. Oh, I don't know. It's a true or false. Okay, if you're if you're in a real state, it means that you're in an unusual and extreme emotional condition. Uh, yeah. Um, you're very upset. So if you're very upset, you probably do not look wonderful. I don't know many people oh. who get very upset and look terrific. <laughs> uh, yeah. I got it. Right. Um, yeah, he, he lost his job and his wife wants to divorce him. He's in a real state. I think he's been drinking for three days nonstop. Okay. Like that. Uh yeah, probably not looking good. All right, uh, Rebecca, number eight. Eight. If you are caught on the hop at work, you are um, you are one of the busiest and most energet energetic employer employees. Mm. You are caught on the hop hop hop. I don't know what is hop. Let me check. Hop. Well, liter literally, it's a small jump or jumping on one leg. Um, you are caught on the hop at work. You are one <clears throat> of the busiest and most energetic employees. I don't think so. No, you don't think so. Yeah, I think you're right. So, what does that mean? Uh, what do you think it means, caught on the hop? Okay, I I don't I don't know exactly the meaning of the this um, uh, sentence, but I think it's something. It's not good for the employee. Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, yeah, this is a weird sentence. Weird example. If you're caught on the hop, it means you weren't expecting something. Uh, Oh, okay. You want to order one million cheeseburgers? <laughs> Whoa! You caught me on the hop. I wasn't ready for that. Uh, I have no way I can make you a million cheeseburgers today. Um, you're uh, unprepared. It's a challenging. It's a challenging. Yeah, it's challenging, and in, in the 
it's more the ideal the idea that you're not ready for something so you you don't deal with a problem or mm -hmm. a challenge very well because you're not you weren't ready for it um, it's sometimes you you very seldom it's this is much more British than American I've I've heard it very rarely used by Americans and I've used, heard it used by sports announcers in the United States um, you know a baseball player suddenly the ball is hit to him and he was oh he was caught on the hop and he missed the ball that was hit right to him he wasn't prepared for it and so he made a mistake as a result that's how I have heard this idiom used before uh, well yeah in conjunction with other baseball related idioms he, he didn't keep his eye on the ball and he was caught on the hop like like that okay uh, Christian let's move on to number nine I'm here. Yeah. yeah. If you screw a spanner in the work, your boss will probably promote for your good sense. I think it's correct because um, if you screw a spanner in the work, uh, said uh, you make a, to do something, you know, uh, to have a success activity, success plan, or something is uh, maybe you have a re rewards, you know. Well, you okay. Let's talk about it a minute. Um, so we kind of paint the picture here. First of all, what does this mean in the works? Or what's a, what does the works refer to? The works, it's uh, your job, for example. Your job. No. Uh, you, no. What are you doing? This actually, you doing? no, uh, because that would have to be work without an S. Because work is uncountable. So Christian, when we use the word works, um, like waterworks, okay. I went to the waste treatment facility, and and the works were huge and amazing. You're actually referring to machinery. So uh, machinery are large pieces of machinery that that do some kind of process. For example, manufacturing something, or purifying water, or your car engine. If I threw a wrench, a tool into your car wrench, into your car engine, <laughs> not even looking, I just threw it in there. <laughs> what would happen? Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Um, not, hmm. not good. <laughs> it might get caught in the fan. It might hit something and damage it. So. If you throw a spanner in the works, it's an unexpected, um, random, almost random, unexpected action. Um, so this is not okay. I, we I was discussing literally what you would be doing is throwing a wrench into an engine or into a motor, which would not be good. Abstractly, the idiom means that you you do something completely uh, that messes everything up you, you, ah, okay. you, you add some random element you create a situation you you do something that is unexpected or and well unnecessary because it's going to be bad um, that creates a lot of problems probably for a lot of people ah I think you know because when I saw you know um, the rest of the phrase your boss would probably promote for you good sense for me it was positive sense yeah right because you were th that's why I went immediately to in the works you were thinking about work as in occupation as in job but this is not what this means work the works here means like machinery so it's a, a literal expression which idiomatically is very abstract for me meaning I'll give you an example um, I don't know if you guys really follow the news that that much, but American news, for example, I would say Donald Trump's candidacy, he's such a wingnut, he's such a goofball, he says such crazy things that his, his um, candidacy for presidency has thrown a spanner in the whole works. The whole 
I, everything is screwed up because of this guy. Everyone's talking about his boneheaded statements, his strange things he says, and nobody's talking about the issues. They're not doing what they're supposed to be doing when they're trying to be elected president. They're all dealing with this spanner in the works, which is Donald Trump and his hair. <laughs> <laughs> yes, okay. It's true. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. There you go. So that's how the idiom could be used. His his whole yeah, he just changed everything and made everything crazy and difficult. Yeah. That's the idea. All right. V number 10. If you have to resign from your job under a plan, it means you have properly done something you should not done, should not have done. How can I say uh, should not have done quickly, like you know? Yeah, reduce speech. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, let me try. Uh, it means you've prop you've first of all, I would reduce those. You've probably done something you shouldn't have done. Shouldn't have. Should should shouldn't have. Shouldn't have. Shouldn't have. Shouldn't have. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Like D O B E, the bird. Uh -huh. Shouldn't have. Shouldn't yeah. have. That's good. That's very good. Okay. Uh, is this statement true? No. Uh, I think it's false. I have to disagree. Actually, under a cloud, clouds are basically negative connotations. Um. Every cloud has a silver lining. The cloud part is the bad part. A silver lining is the good part. Uh, so, basically, when you see clouds in idiomatic expressions or used in metaphors in English, they're bad. They're negative. But uh, I'm on cloud nine. Mean something. Ah, well, okay. See, there you go. You got me on that one. Very good. You're right. On cloud nine is very positive. That's right. Um, so yeah. not all. Not all. You're right. You got me on that one. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, rain and clouds are just, you know, usually they're negative. You're right. There's an exception there. Okay. Uh, yeah. And this basically spells it right out. You you've probably done something you should not have done. You're leaving in some kind of disgrace. Doesn't necessarily mean you're fired. It often means that you're suspected. If you leave under a cloud, maybe the other employees have no idea why you're suddenly leaving the company. They they don't know what wrong thing you've done. It, it, we often use this idiom when the actual wrong thing is not known. Uh, yeah. But you could you know you could be the CEO of a company and you you lose a lot of money for your company and they ask you to leave so you leave under a cloud then everybody knows the whole world knows that your company did badly uh, yeah okay some of the false ones that we've just looked at can be used in these statements let's see if we can remember which ones were wrong or or which might which of the idioms that we just looked at might be appropriate in these following sentences can number 11 uh, so we both lost our jobs. Uh, at least we are. We are. I don't know. Uh, at least we are in the same boat. There you go. We're in the same bad situation. <laughs> at least, like this is a good thing. <laughs> at least we're both in the same boat. Yeah, well, okay. Um, all right, fair enough. You you use this idiom, we're in the same boat, as a way to try to make each other feel better. That That's the situation where it gets used. Um, okay, well, uh, another, okay, sometimes we might say someone, oh, uh, this is, this is Bob, this is John, this is Bill. Bill just got divorced. Guess what? Bob and John and I are divorced. We're all in the same boat. Join the club. Okay? If, when, when somebody newly has joined us in the same situation, very common for English speakers to say, well, join the club, as a kind of sarcastic 
way, okay, we're a club of people who all have this bad experience or bad situation. Is an, an another useful idiom here. Mm, Ileana, number 12. Um, just read it. Um, my sister has just had some very bad news about her husband. I'll have to go and see her. She's... She's... Mm -hmm. uh, in the tight corner. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Depends. <laughs> Depends. We don't know the context really. Could be she's in a tight corner. But all we really know is that she's got bad uh, news about her husband. Or bad news. Um, no idea. Under a cloud. She's probably in a real state. In she's a real emotion state. Yes. She's mm -hmm. Emotionally a disaster. She's yeah, not um, in emotional control. She's in a real state. Somebody in a real state, they haven't combed their hair, they forget to take a bath, they probably look terrible. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, Nian, number 13. Uh, you shouldn't have a race. Uh, the question of holiday pays, that really is under cloud. Under cloud. Uh, no, under a cloud is really used for this one situation where somebody has to leave a position, uh, a, really a job. Uh, uh, we only really use it that way or, or maybe, I don't know, maybe you have to uh, quit a club or something, some organization you're in. That's possible. He quit the he quit the Rotary Club under a cloud um, for some reason. He did something wrong, which maybe people don't know. But uh, so that's the true uh, spanner. Yeah. Sp I can you yeah. yes true a spanner in the work. Yeah. Uh, right. And again, since uh, Americans use wrench instead of spanner, we have the same exact idiom. We just use wrench. You threw a wrench in the works. Or sometimes we say you threw a monkey wrench in the works. A monkey wrench is just a type of wrench that's it's big and it's very adjustable. But same concept. Okay. Uh, Rebecca, number 14. The bank is putting pressure on us to bring our overdraft down. We are, but I'm blank, but I'm sure it won't last. The market will pick up soon. Okay, the bank. Okay, go, go up. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, in a tight corner. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, you got the same one again. Yeah, we're in a tight yeah. corner. We're in a jam. We're having a difficult time right now. Difficult to get out of, but yeah, that's it. You got it. Yeah. yeah. Christian, number 15. Yeah, the biggest order of the year and five staff on holiday. The biggest. We are we are really in the same boat? No. Mm, same as who? No, we don't have anybody else there. No, the biggest order of the year and five staff on holiday. Um, yeah. You're really unprepared. Uh, it's through a spanner in the works? No. no. Uh, Are you unprepared? Yeah, you cough of the top. Uh, no. What? Caught on the hop? Is that what you said? Yeah. That's it. That's it. That's it. Yeah, that's it. Oh, okay. We were really caught on the hop. So this is exactly. This is a very good example of how it's used practically. 
all right, you're understaffed, you're not prepared to, to do an order. That's it. it. So this, um, again, I, I mentioned that it's used in America and I, in sports sometimes, but this is the other place it's used in, in business a lot. Uh, okay, wow, we're running out of time and we're in a bit of a jam. Um, let's try adding prepositions to see if we know these uh, idioms and we'll try to talk about as many as we can fit into the rest of our time here. V, A. I think uh, at a loss. Yeah, okay. What does that mean if you're at a loss? I'm at a loss as to what to do about this problem. Um. So uh, I need to I need to fix something. Yeah, if you're if you're at a loss, you don't know how to address a problem. You don't know what to do. You have no idea. Uh, it's an expression that we use to express the idea. I don't know how to fix this problem. I don't even know where to start. I'm totally at a loss. I'm completely at a loss. Uh, sometimes we just say I'm completely at a loss. Sometimes I'm completely at a loss about what to do. Sometimes we actually add the explaining phrase. Sometimes we don't. Ken. B. B. Uh, in the creek. No, you're not in the creek. <laughs> uh -huh. Take a look at the uh, cartoon over here. Uh -huh. Ah. On the uh, on the creek. No. Ah uh, ah uh, uh, So truly up the creek. Yes. Oh, up okay. the creek. The entire phrase. Sometimes we use up the creek as an abbreviation. The entire idiom is up the creek without a paddle. Uh. Which what does that mean? We're um, up the creek. Uh, maybe uh, I can say achieve something without some, uh, any efforts. No, if you're <laughs> up the creek without a paddle, if you can imagine you have to go down a river but you don't have a, a paddle for your boat, you just have to float over the waterfalls, you're in trouble. You're in big trouble. I see. Okay. Okay, my car broke down. I'm stuck 90 miles away. I was supposed to be I told my wife I'd be home 2 hours ago. I am up the creek without a paddle. I am in big trouble. My wife is going to freak out. And there's nothing I can do about it. I'm doomed. Uh Okay, uh Eliana, how about C? Uh yeah, I'm uh out of limbo? Uh, no. <laughs> or in, in limbo. There you go. That's it. I'm in limbo. What is that? What do you suppose that means? Uh, it means that in the middle of something. It means that you're... Mm -hmm. uh, it's... You're, you're in, in, in uh, unknown or oh, not unknown predictable situ situation or just strange so yeah, you don't know right. what's going on that's it exactly you're not in heaven and you're not in hell you start a new job but no one wants to train you you don't know what you're supposed to do you don't know where you're supposed to sit you don't know even what your job is perfect example of where you might say oh my god I'm in limbo here I don't know what I'm supposed to be where I'm supposed to be what I'm supposed to do you're confused. You're at a loss as to what you're supposed to do next. Yeah, that's it. Very good. Rebecca, D. D, uh, in hot water. Yeah. What's the meaning? You are in trouble. That's in it. Trouble. Very direct. Can't really yes. say it any more, any better, more directly than that. You're in trouble. Yes, it's true. Uh, Probably we often use he's in hot water with his wife. He's in what hot or hot ugh, hot water with his boss. We we often add with who who's mad at you who you're in trouble with frequently. Christian uh, E. Out of my depth. Perfect. Yes. What is the meaning there? 
uh, Automydev is um, uh, how do you say that uh, if you are involved or something and you can manage that, you know. That's it. Uh, you you lack the ability or the skills or yeah. the knowledge to do something. You can't handle it. That's it. It's like, it's like beyond my own knowledge, for example. Yeah, that's it. You got it. Yeah. Very good. V, uh, F. Um, F in a bit of a jam. Mm -hmm. Very common, the whole bit of thing. I'm in a bit of a jam. Can you lend me $10? So, okay. I'm stuck. I, I'm having a little bit of a problem. Uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, Ken G. Uh, at a standstill. Okay. What does that mean? For example, maybe without doing something, not without doing nothing, yeah. anything. Without doing anything, nothing's moving, nothing's happening. Mm -hmm. Traffic is at a standstill. I don't mm -hmm. know when I will get home. Traffic's at a standstill. Um, the the government slammed a subpoena on the factory and production is at a standstill. Nothing's being done. Nothing's being made. Yeah, that's it. And last one, Ileana. Um, uh, up the wrong foot. Uh, on the wrong foot. Yeah. On the wrong yeah. foot. On yeah, the wrong yeah. foot. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, usually the whole expression we got off on the wrong foot, I th or I think we got off on the wrong foot. Uh, what does that mean, Ileana, if we, we got off on the wrong foot? Um, so you, you've, you've made a, you've made a bad choice. So well, you... not exactly. It refers to a bad start. Um, if uh, I just met you and we start arguing about something, and then I don't realize that we're going to be working together. Oops, uh, I'm sorry. I think we got off on the wrong foot. Can we start again? Can we reintroduce ourselves? Okay. Just, just a bad start. Just a bad start. That's it. Um, and usually a bad start between two people. Not like uh, your first day at work and things went wrong. Um, you wouldn't probably wouldn't say, oh, I got off on the wrong foot at work. You get off on the wrong foot with a person. Uh, how you start a relationship and meeting them. It's, it's really quite specific. Okay, I'm out of time and over time. Uh, so thank you, everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, thank you.